what's good back with another video today i'm on a 2009 honda pilot okay uh we have a windshield washer fluid leak and i noticed yep there it is starting to leak again right down there but um come up top okay your engine power steering coolant reservoir overspill and then you got your windshield washer fluid so if i look down in here you'll see a wet spot I can get this to bend correctly. Okay, so we got a wet spot. Let me change this light. Okay, right down there. So that's where we're leaking. You have two washer motors, one on this side, then you have one over here on that side. So it's leaking from that one on that side. So I'm getting ready to take the wheel well cover off so I can see, because uh, this is the first time on this vehicle, but I think it's leaking from the rubber grommet down there. So, yep. So, mess with it all right so to get access to this guy oh yeah always use the jack stand for safety so that was a little popping from the jack stand. anyway back to the video okay so you're gonna have to remove these clips you're gonna need a trim removal tool you might need this guy you definitely gonna need a light um, you're gonna need this guy right here in these three spots right here because you have three real rusty 10 millimeters right there actually four but i don't think we have to remove this one i'll find out in a little bit here in a second but you see i'm still leaking over there in my fluid just need to peel this back some so i can see what's going on but these are locked up this guy right here is rated for 35 foot pounds and let's see if we can get it on and the reason why it's so tight let's see if i can get it okay so that's real rusty so all this salt and debris, you're gonna need to spray inside here some type of rust penetrant, which in our case, we're gonna use a PB Blaster. It's one of my favorite go-tos versus WE40. Trying not to get anything on my match yet. So I'm gonna hit these and hopefully they break free. But yeah, little stuff like this. Hopefully it's just a rubber grommet, which I'm thinking that it is. And I don't know if they sell them so, uh, separate, but I'm gonna figure something out for stopping this leak. And let's start removing these guys up here. Okay. All our little trim pieces. Okay, so you got a screwdriver Phillips head here. Come here, you got another Phillips head. Uh, I didn't bring mine at the time. See up here, you're supposed to have a clip right here. But that one's not in there. And come over here. You got one under here. Trim removal tool. Let's pop it down. And you might want to pick some extra ones up because these at times break just like that one did. So I got some extra. <laughs> All right. So that's loose up there. Now we need these tins to come loose here. Let's go up top, scan around. And we got another one over here. This is a screwdriver flathead. Should be able to get that out with a flathead. And if not, let's see if I can pry it out with this guy on this corner right here. And he broke on me a little bit too. Not nice. Those happen like that sometimes. Hit him with some WD-40. It's a blaster. Let's go ahead and do this one since that one broke. And let's do these two. Just cause. And these... Might not have to remove these. I'm going to try to just bend it out the way. Usually these are pretty flexible. But uh, let me get a flathead. Be back, back. All right, so back in here. See if this helps out. And you already seen the clip location, so get this out of my face. Let's try to get this one on out. And hopefully I don't need any needle noses. But it just might, but I'm thinking it'll come out. Like I said, it might break, so you might want to have some extra. Okay, let me go with this. And I'll get some regulars as well. And this one broke kind of kind of bad, so try to squish it and break it out. Because we're not gonna reuse it. And it's plastic, so let's Break it out, we got a little piece of the mill out. So now it should pop out, no problem. There we go. Yep, they get old, it's an 08. All right, we're here. Let's check around over here. 
Okay, we look pretty good over in here. So everything now pretty much gonna be over here. So let's start unscrewing stuff. All right, Phillips. And I'm hoping these come out. Ready, uh, bowl? Are you, buddy? There you are. All right, let's go back down here. That's one. That's one facing upward right here. And that connects to the bumper. It's coming out pretty easy. That's a good thing always. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera. has a nice length to it all right so now we should be able to move this and now it's time to go try to get these to break free and i think i'm going to use some pliers and this to ratchet it out or hold it down some kind of way let's see hopefully they break free without tearing up the plastic let's see what we get Got a broken head, so I'm probably gonna use plastic snap ends for these. I had a feeling they might snap just because how old they are. So even though they did, we'll go back in with something to make that secure. Even if I have to use some zip ties, it's not gonna rust like that is, and they're easy to replace, they're real cheap. And stuff like this happens. This is one of the vehicles that we just picked up, so I figured I do everything for our inspection wise, need some brakes and stuff, so this leak is the current issue and it's still dripping. I seen that the light was on when I picked it up as far as the uh, venture washer fluid light. I guess it might break too. And it's bending up in plastic. And that one is too. Alright, so since we have that issue, let's try to hold it still. Okay, try to break it free. That's the one that already loose. And actually, I'm gonna get some clamping pliers. Some of these guys right here, needle nose clamping pliers, just to hold this metal piece still. Let's see, let's work it down. Yeah, a little stuff like this will prevent you from doing the job. All right, let's see if I can crank this and hold this at the same time without breaking anything. See, so are we over there? Yep. Dang, that's strong. go regular size ratchet and we'll change from this wobbly to a regular flat probably stuff like this to make the job longer but if you were changing your pump this is how you get to it I'm just re hopefully repairing whatever's leaking and we popped off again all right so let me proceed I'm trying to get these three out and I'll show you what I've done here in a bit. 
All right, just wanted to show that all those broke out. So this one really didn't want to come out, and the other two did, but they did break off, so I'm gonna use these kind to go back in. So I do believe you gotta take these out too, these two here. This one, I think it stays fixed. So let's go ahead and pop these out. I figured I get this on cam. Those two right there, one and two. So let me pop those out and let you know what's happening. All right, so this bolt comes out too. This one did not snap on me. It's coming out pretty easy. I guess because it's thicker plastic and it's holding this a little better. I'm just glad it's rotating. I see if it's coming out. It's spinning. Feels like it is. See if we got any left. I'm gonna switch back over to the Swift Boot. See what we get. I think it's just spinning in the circle inside. Let's see. Yep, I do believe so. spinning I can feel it all right let me get that one out be right back let you know what's up all right so hopefully yours doesn't break like mine did and it's going to be kind of hard but it might break it might not just kind of make you a spot to tie into and let's see if that's all we need to pull out let's see it might be another one yeah I'm going to remove one more clip just to be safe These up here, they're coming out pretty easy, even though they're dirty and got salt and stuff on them. But they seem to come out pretty easy. All right, that should have given me some cool, and I will figure something for over here, but it's common for this stuff to happen from rusty stuff. I have two 10 millimeter pigs, or actually three, all of them still stuck in, so I'll figure out how to get them out. And yeah, I think I'm gonna use some pliers at the top and some pliers at the bottom and work them back and forth now that I got access. But yep, we got three of these guys. All these guys broke off, happens. All right, so from there, we got some access to wiggle. And let's kind of just pull it out. Uh, there we go. Just like that. And then you can just fold this out the way. Just like that. Now, this washer motor is leaking from this motor up here. Let's see. Looks like the rubber grommet or the motor itself is leaking. And it's in a tedious spot. And I think I might have to pull it out from up top. Let me scan around. Trying to see, I think it's leaking at the pump itself. Trying to see. Yeah, I do believe it's leaking at the pump itself. All right, so I'm gonna go up top and try to figure out how to pull this out. As we got two pumps. Yeah, I think that's the plug in there. All right, so this is in a odd spot. And I think it's just the pump that's leaking. So, But this is how you get access to it. It looks like I'm gonna have to remove it to fix this. And we still got a leakage. So, let me get a pan for this. And I'm gonna pop this motor up. Uh, let's see what's going on. I'll let you know right when I get back. All right, so I'm back. You may or may not have to remove your inner wheel well shield unless your pump is stuck and mine was stuck. So you got two. You got one on this side and one on that side. Um, this is the part that I decided to go with. This is the parts number here from AutoZone. Okay. And it's a little different as far as the part. Let me show you and compare. Uh, let me set up my tripod. All right, so this is the original OE pump, okay? And this is the new pump. 
comes with a rubber grommet as well. I believe this was 20, yeah, $27.99 models on. And it also comes with a new rubber grommet, so you're gonna have to pop your old one out for your reservoir to sit down in there. But this is the difference. Only difference it is on these, everything is the same except for this at the top. This is not a hole. It does not post to squirt out any fluid, but everything else is pretty much the same. Okay, these two guys here, this one's different, but yep, a little difference. But this right here, don't have to worry about supposedly. So I'm gonna hook it back up, put everything back, and then go from there to see if it's gonna do what it's supposed to. So that being said, let me go down here and leave this here for a minute. And we're gonna go down here and pop out this old rubber grommet. And shrink this guy. And let's tilt this guy. Alrighty. Okay, so the reservoir is up in there. Let's get some more lighting. I had to move around. Got a, quite a bit of spillage on the ground from doing this job, but all good. Just had you some mats or something. Alright. Alright, so there's our rubber grommet in there. Hopefully you guys can see it. This guy right here. And let's see if we got some visual. Yeah, I think so. Maybe not, maybe not. Okay, well, anyway, right there. Let's try to lean in a little better. And that's not gonna work, so let's make it work. All right, this rubber grommet right there. Okay, I'm gonna have to pop this guy out. And put the new one in. So let's do that. All right, so it has a filter on it. You're gonna have to put that back on the new one. Then pop it back down in there. So let's do that now. Camera back set. I'd like to go do the best videos possible so let's pop this out oops don't mess it up it doesn't feel like this one's supposed to come out but right, let's see what we can do because the new grommet doesn't have that on it and this one's attached all right so the factory is attached and i think this one is swole up where it might be leaking and just to make sure i'm just going to replace it it did not come with a newer a new screen on it some do some don't so let's pop it back in it's going to be a little tedious right there but you're going to kind of just line it up in the hole and smash it in there we go got it smashed in now i'm going to connect so i did figure out and find out after looking up how to disconnect these right here from the actual pump so it says you got these little rope, uh, these are like a lock right here. So you're gonna twist this. Hopefully I can get that on camera. You're gonna twist this when you're taking it off one of these ways. So you're gonna twist it and then it's gonna pop up. So this little sleeve right here is gonna twist around. There we go. So once you twist it like that, it should pop out. And I don't think you have to twist it. You should just be able to snap it back in when you're going with the new one. So let's go ahead and proceed on doing so. Get this new one in. Connect the connector first. And go from there. And start smashing it back in. So yeah, I'll go back up top. Gonna be up in here. And we're gonna go straight down with that guy. Right over there. Okay, so let me connect my connector back and be right back all right so i had to work and work and work this guy to get it down in there it's got a little nipple notch on the inside of it uh, your actual reservoir excuse me um, when you go back in with this you do not have to twist it you just already have it set snap back in it just snaps right in so getting ready to fill this up before i put any of this back and make sure this pump is working and not leaking. So I'm probably just gonna do like a half of the jug just to make sure and then test it, clean all this up underneath. It's dripping, it's dripping. All right, 
still got to figure out some stuff as far as these plastic pieces and the little stuff that froze up in there like this one here that broke off yeah all right so let me fill it up and test it be right back all right so the squirters are working great getting ready to button all this back up i'm gonna wait another 10 minutes before i go ahead but put almost half a jug in there and it was just sitting overnight and you can just see it dripping because i got all this right in here that was coming from it leaking and leaking and leaking so develop a puddle in the driveway so i'm gonna sit here play with it a little more make sure there is no leaks and it looks great so like i said it might come with a screen might not if you go to the actual dealership and then probably have a screen for us that all right just wanted to add this just to let you guys know all right so this motor over here i do believe is for the front and that motor over there that we just replaced is for the rear so yep dual motors one in the front one in the rear so hopefully this helps you out on the repair and get yours done you may not have to remove the inner liner shield um my first time doing one of these uh, you can actually just pull it straight up but you might be stuck and you might still have to move the inner wheel well lining to go in like i had to up under here and i use my screwdriver to work it up and out so not this one but a flathead got it out and yeah hopefully we don't have any more leaks so this is how you change the windshield washer motor on a 2009 honda pilot so this is the exl version um yeah hit the thumbs up like to subscribe if you will and always remember russ is the enemy on these things and until the next video i am out